break. When I say the words climate or the word aerosol, think about what images popped into your head. Maybe you have some scary thoughts about an aerosol can, words like chlorofluorocarbon, and the depletion of our ozone hole. Maybe you picture that familiar stock photo of a power plant releasing pollutants into our atmosphere. Maybe you picture exhaust from cars sitting in a traffic jam. Me too. I picture waves breaking at the beach and the smell of salty sea air. Now these are all valid images of aerosols. Atmospheric aerosols are suspensions of solids, liquids, or mixed particles in our air. And they come in many forms. They are both natural and some are anthropogenic or human-made. And aerosols contribute the largest uncertainty in our ability to predict global climate. Now, 70% of our Earth is covered in water. So sea spray aerosols represent a very large fraction of naturally produced aerosol particles. Understanding their composition, their production, and their reactivity in our environment is crucial in minimizing that uncertainty in the impact that aerosols play in our overall climate. Now, not that long ago, sea spray aerosols were approximated as just salt particles, sodium chloride, in our air. But they are actually way more chemically complex than that. Now, the uppermost few layers of our ocean surface is a biofilm called the sea surface microlayer. And it is heavily enriched in so many things. Organic molecules, lipids, fatty acids, viruses, bacteria, salt, you name it, it's up there. And when waves break upon wind action on the ocean surface, all this stuff gets transported into our atmosphere via aerosol. Now, when waves break on the surface, a process called bubble bursting occurs. And the bubble bursting process produces two main kinds of aerosols. At the surface of our bubble, that uh, uppermost surface of our cavity, when that pops, we produce what are called film drops. These are small. When that bubble cavity collapses, we produce larger jet drops. The composition of these two different types of drops that are both sea spray aerosols is very different. Those smaller film drops are heavily enriched in the organic matter that's in our sea surface microlayer. Now when these, these aerosols go into our atmosphere, they participate in various climate relevant properties, okay? And these properties are all heavily influenced by the chemical composition at the surface of those aerosol particles. Aerosols themselves can either scatter or absorb solar, solar radiation, leading to overall heating or cooling effects. Aerosol particles can sort of act like a feed on which clouds can form, those clouds then participating in overall heating or cooling effects. And aerosol particles can sort of serve as a surface on which various chemical reactions can happen in our atmosphere. Molecules at that surface can either promote or inhibit these chemical reactions to different degrees. So as our ability to measure aerosols has improved over time, our understanding of their production, composition, and overall properties that engage in climate-relevant processes has improved along with it. We're now better able to approximate the chemical composition of aerosols in global climate models. And this significantly will reduce the uncertainty in the role that aerosols play in our overall climate. So the next time that you're sitting at the beach relaxing, in addition to just taking in the views, maybe also just take a second to appreciate the complex chemistry that is going on in the air around you.